You're listening to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. This makes my nipples hard. Hey there, welcome to the show. Today, Paul and I are here to talk about where we would rate certain SCI Zero games. Because we've talked about, um, what, what was the one we talked about before, Paul? Uh, it, it was, was a while ago another, now. There was another acronym. It was, no, it was AGI. We did AGI. Now we're doing right. SCI Zero. SCI Zero. Or SC10 right. so, if you're um, having a mild stroke. <laughs> <laughs> it just, this is kind of what I've been doing. Uh, so uh, within the uh, SCI 10 range that we're talking nope. about is... SC- uh, <laughs> and there it is again. Is, no, <laughs> is it SCI? Like, I think we should just keep rolling and let the audience know that, that they can expect more of this through the episode. And is Oh, yes. So let the, me explain why. So uh, up until today, like literally five minutes before the episode, like I have some mild dyslexia in the family. <laughs> and um, I was reading it as SCI 10 or SCI I0. I wasn't sure which one of the two it was because the one in the I look the same. So I keep calling it uh, something that it quite isn't. But what I mean, and you can just substitute this in for my words during the episode, is SCI zero. Yeah. So but we're going to say wrong things and it's on you guys <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to just make them right, you know, amongst wait, yourselves. Wait. There's more to it than that. Okay, so when I was asking my lovely uh, fans and listeners of the show in in Facebook and in X and in Discord uh, to rank the games, I phrased it in a, in a way that was a bit ambiguous. And so some people put the games in order of preference and other people gave them a score out of 10, which is what I was trying to ask for. Was- so we what we... <laughs> it was really just a comedy, like a, a series of unfortunate events. It was quite a comedy because Anna was all, you, we need to rank them in order to put them in the whatever. And, but, but it came across as you need to rank them in order of, of like your favorites. But she meant like in order to, to, I don't, I look, it's still a little unclear what she did mean, but this is how we got there. And which we all kind of figured out before this episode. So the point is the the people that gave a ranking order from their favorite to least favorite, we took their number one spot and made it a 10 because we're going to call that a 10 out of 10. And then um, say it was their, their second choice, it would become a nine out of 10. And then people that just ranked it out of 10, we, we kept their ranking scores as is. That way, all scores line up and it is mathematically perfect. I can say that because I didn't get very far in high school. Plus, uh, there's 10 SCI zero games. So mm-hmm. that possibly makes mathematical sense. Unclear. Look, this episode is convoluted like a Sierra game. We do this on purpose, frankly. It's thematic. <laughs> it's, you know, we're really just trying to get you guys in the mood to, to go over some nice convoluted Sierra games, starting with the first SCI. Okay, hold on, hold on. I got a little excited. I got a little excited. But, but let me just clarify real quick. SCI, I heard somebody on one of the socials refer to it as EGA parser, which which I like. I pedantically am like, well, actually, AGI is also EGA, but... There's only so many acronyms to go around, but the, I guess the point being is that uh, to refresh your memories, SCI Zero is still parser games, um, but they are it's like high definition AGI. You know, the, the, they're just a lot. Uh, well, okay, I'll settle down with a lot more resolution, but there's a bit more resolution um, here. I'll tell you what, it, this is this is ridiculous. Let me just tell you the games that we're going to be ranking in order of their release. Maybe King's Quest Four, Police Quest Two. Leisure Suit Larry 2, Space Quest 3, Colonel's Bequest, Codename Iceman, Heroes Quest, Leisure Suit Larry 3, King's Quest, the Quest for the Crown remake, and Mixed Up Mother Goose. So there you go. Those are the SCI Zero games. I've, I've long said on the show that it is my favorite group of games. Like, like this is peak Sierra, I think, in my opinion. I don't know if I still mean that, but it's like... If you were to if you were to look at AGI, SCI Zero, and SCI, SCI Zero easily has I think the most concentrated greatness in it. Um, I mean, like Lara Bow, Space Quest, it's like some of the best of the. Okay, look, I've said too much. Do you want to <laughs> do you want to just start with King's Quest? 
<laughs> sure, let, let's do that. Now, I, I just want to say what we've done is we've compiled everybody's answers with my mathematical properties, and we've oh, ranked, we put everything with the score that way. So each one of these will be ranked. At the end of the episode, we're going to take your guys' final ranking and our final ranking or scoring, if you want to put it that way, and we're going to mix it all together into like the ultimate number for SCI Zero Games. But yeah. yes, let's start with King's Quest Four, which for me, had, I don't know, has anybody listened to this show before heard me talk about King's Quest Four before? And if they have, they might have noticed that it is pretty high up on my list as far as like favorite games go, because it hits me with the nostalgia factor. It was my first full adventure game that I completed on my own. And I, I also happen to think it's a beautiful game that, that's gotten a few various remakes over the years and a few potential ones coming up. But I'd probably rank this game fairly highly. Am I, should I say score, Paul? Do you want me to switch to score? Yes, let, let's, let's, why not? Yeah, we're, now we're <laughs> talking about the game score. So. Yeah. We're gonna we're but gonna not go that with score because this episode's convoluted. No, no, not the game score like musical score. No, but the game <laughs> score like its number. Words because are just too many words. There's people, not enough words. Sorry. People were asking like how to judge a score, and to me, it's just overall preference. The the graphics, the music, the nostalgia, the actual gameplay. It's sort of all the all the details of the game to me, encompassing in what I would give it as a final number, which is entirely personal to me. So I don't care about you know what the magazine said about it or what other people have said about it. I'm I'm just taking into consideration me myself and I. So for King's Quest, I'm putting it as a 9.5. Whereas what I like to do is just knee-jerk say a number and then fight to the death, making it sound like that's the number I mean. You know, just, <laughs> just really stick by it. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess, okay, so you give it a 9.5. Wait, hold on. Does, I don't think we should do decimals, yo. We're not, okay. neither we'll of do, us are math. We'll do a, we'll do a, oh God, you're forcing me there. Fine, 10. Okay. You'll thank me later when we're, we're using, you know, a calculator instead of our heads anyway. Um, True. Okay, I'm going to give King's Quest, I don't know, okay. I don't know what to say right now because I don't want to, I don't want to use all my like super high scores up, but I love this game. That's what I mean with SCI Zero though. These, like almost all these games are exceptional. Um, I'm going to give it a nine. <laughs> okay, I heard, I heard a key thump. As if yeah. to indicate that you've recorded that for the <laughs> I record. did. It is in the records now, officially. Um, I'm trying to see, uh, of, of some of our friends that responded with their answers, if anybody else gave King's Quest 4 a 9 or a 10. And we have one. Ivan Kristoff um, from X, he gave, us, he gave King's Quest 4 um, a 10. Nice. So, Thanks, so we're not Ivan. alone there. And yeah, he's the only other one. So yeah, there's one. Um, we didn't do King's Quest 4 on the AGI one, right? Because we're like, most people played the SCI. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if we did bring it up. I mean, like, yeah, we wouldn't. None of us really came across the AGI version when we were growing up. For far and few between. Most people had to seek it out later in life on purpose. What is your, uh, just pick one favorite moment of King's Quest 4. Ooh, favorite moment is finally getting the axe like especially my first time and being able to make the trees be scared enough to leave me alone because you know I, mm. I like I like that for the scare factor but like visually when it when night falls obviously is going to be my favorite moment and and walking by the mirror at nighttime in the mansion I love that too mm, very cool Good choices. Okay. Yeah, my, mine's the nighttime. It's, it's yeah. like, because I didn't know. I made it to 30 years old without mm -hmm. that game being spoiled for me. Um, it's beautiful. And yeah, I had no idea. So it really took me by surprise. And then the, the whole game changes its tone quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Like it goes from like, you know, fairy tale and whimsical to, to dark and zombies. And it's just, yeah, that was awesome. Good. Okay. Well, see, there's got that dark, that dark side to her that I've always loved in the games. They're never like all light and happiness. I mean, her books like that too. It's not all, you know, informational. There's famine and there's, you know, all sorts of things going on. I like how her brain works so much. Um, which was something Tara. Yeah. Road to Tara. Okay. Um, 
All right. Well, the next game that came out in SCI Zero uh, was Police Quest Two: The Vengeance. Mm -hmm. By the way, King's Quest Four possibly came out September 1988. Look, listen, we've we've been through this plenty of times before. The, the dates with Sierra stuff is is it's pretty dodgy. It's hard to find. Mm -hmm. It's often hard to find the same release date in two different sources <laughs> so with, mm -hmm. with, with their records and things like that. I, I think a large part of that has to do with the, that when they, when everything went to, to hell on what was it, chainsaw Monday or something like they, they just threw everything out. So that is probably a lot to do with some of the problems, but um, anyway, police quest two came out November of 1988 again, probably, but this is like, you know, November that's like Pete Ken Williams season for putting a game out. So I, I believe him. Mm hmm. Um, so yeah, Police Quest 2, what do you, what do you, what are you going to give it? Well, I was able to complete it without any kind of a hint book on an amber monochrome monitor, even with the diving scenes. I love like, I love when, okay, like Police Quest 2 hits you when it first starts in that like 3D kind of Sierra. It doesn't matter what color you're seeing it in. It's, it's like, you know, that this is, at least it was to me, a graphically impressive game. And, and I didn't even know about any other versions that existed that Paul's explained to me about over the years. <laughs> oh, <even. laughs> but it's, and it's funny. It's got a little bit in like extra, extra with in jokes and, and with seeing Leisure Suit Larry in it. Um, I, I've always liked the way they do like cutaway scenes of rooms and the way they show the inside of, I don't know, like when you're in searching the plane or something. Right. Uh, or you're down in the sewers, for example. It's it's got this the perspectives, right? It's it's a really it's a different kind of a game. And as um, soon as you said mention the airplane, my, my brain just went fuselage. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yes, God, exactly. <laughs> it's a you get a nice cut out of the fuselage. Even looking at screenshots now, like where you check mm -hmm. in um at the police station has just this wildly odd cut out you know as as i'm mm -hmm. sure all the listeners know a lot of the sierra games they did like you know bizarre um i don't know what's the word for that like I, I, is it foreground is it the frame maybe the frame i guess yeah i guess the way that a picture is framed it's almost like diorama style in some of them right yeah that's a good call too but in police quest there's some just kind of wacky ones like the, the like just odd shapes instead of an oval and um Anyway, it's a, it's a, you know, I'm okay. I'm glad you said that though. And I, I recognize you haven't given it a score yet, but just to interject police quest two, that is one thing. I feel like this game is not underrated, but underappreciated. <laughs> me too, because it was so, like police quest one and two to me go together. Like, I don't know, rice and soy sauce or something like they're just, they're such the team that, I mean, three is fine, but three is kind of looking at the first two and going, man, I wish I could be a part of that club. Cause there's just, there's something magical about those first two. Yeah. They're really, it's, hold on. Sorry. Is, is rice and, is that a saying or is that just what came to mind? That's just what came to mind. I like rice with soy sauce, although I prefer it with a bit of butter and a squeeze of lemon too, if I really want to get fussy. Right. But I could see how it was packaged more neatly with just soy sauce instead of, well, with a square of butter mm -hmm. and then also maybe something to drink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, just some soda water. <laughs> um, and OK, so to your point a second ago, too, with it's, it's it's if for nothing else, I feel like it's underappreciated in. OK, this is going to I want to word this in a way that doesn't sound bullshit right away, because I was going to say for its art style and and. It's it isn't particularly gorgeous art and and honestly I never I, I got that put in my head watching Space Quest historian cover this game recently um and it, it was he 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 compared it on screen you know using using the the luxury of video medium that YouTube is and put like Colonel's Bequest and and uh, Heroes Quest and put up some pretty damn convincing uh, screenshots from other games from this era that just they they do make police quest two look a little more like basic it doesn't look bad it's just very mm -hmm. it's very angularly like i don't know it's very uh almost left brain designed art but anyway i'm actually trying to defend the art because it's it's fun to look at like uh, yeah that was yeah. my point Is it vibrant even? color contrasts yeah, right. i've always loved that about it and and they do the sunset scenes and and the way that they use the colors it's it's like I really like the the outdoor locations too, like and where the final showcase takes down takedown is and everything. I don't know. I love it. It's so genuine to me. I've never critiqued the graphics, at least 
I don't see them like that. Maybe the, my I have my retro eyes on. Well, I, and and I haven't either. And I think that's why I'm getting excited right now because it's like, holy shit! It's been 200 episodes, and I have a new thought <laughs> on oh, on Police Quest, which we've you know we've covered up, uh, plenty of times. But it's I'm looking at other SCI Zero games, and it's actually a bit akin to like Leisure Suit Larry, especially two. Um, mm-hmm. And and it's like, okay, here's what I'm trying to say: Police Quest Two. I wouldn't argue that it's beautiful but it looks like you want to explore it. Like mm-hmm. the, each background is like, Ooh, like I want to, even at the park, like with the bushes and the gun and the, and like you want to get in the water or like explore the airplane. And like, it just, each, each scene looks highly explorable. Like you want to mm-hmm. highly clickable. Um, okay. Well, this is parser, but you know, you get the point. Um, highly L O O K enterable. Um, that, that was regrettable. But anyway, point is, yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's ultimately, I think what I'm trying to say is that, that it's a, almost underappreciated for just whatever. I, it's, it's fine. You know what? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just give it, give it a ranking. Get me, get me out of here. I, dude, it's a 10. The Police Quest 2 is a formative game in my upbringing. It was, it's a game that sort of has changed my life all the way through. I, ca- I can't not give it a 10. Um, I forgot to even get into the Japanese graphics, which there's, there's no way anybody listening hasn't heard me rant about, so I, I should leave it. Oh, I watched I it on Space Quest Historians. He did, a, he, did you watch him do I, any of his Twitch his playthroughs with the Japanese version, because, oh my God, he would do some side-by-side comparisons as well. And, uh, and just even the jogger, the jogger by the telephone booth, that girl, she's just like, her body type is different and everything. It's amazing. I was, I had so much fun watching that. I've, I sent him the Japanese game because I, I knew it was like, it was when we first got in the network and he's like, I'm going to mm-hmm. be doing this like on the horizon kind of, kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I was mm-hmm. I, immediately in this DMs like here, Take the zip. This is the Japanese Good. version. This one works in DOSBox. This one works in Scum. Please include this in your video for me. Because it's it's to me, it's still like the, the most what the fuck moment in Sierra's history. It's and, pretty wild, man. It is. It is so wild. <laughs> okay, I don't know if there's a bigger what the fuck moment in Sierra's, you know, 10, 15 years on top there than, than the Japanese version. And the girl, I think the girl you're alluding to, and I could be wrong, but there's a girl that sells flowers outside of the airport. And mm-hmm. she's just like full anime, like, mm-hmm. like almost like Sailor Moon with pink hair kind of situation where it's just like, <laughs> wow, like this is yep. a licensed Sierra game. This is not a mod. Um, it's, it's absolutely, it's, it's insane. So my only critique is that you couldn't drive in the second one. And I really liked the driving in the overhead map in the first one. With Police Quest, the driving gets a little worse each game. Is my mm-hmm. is my takeaway because because yeah. and then I I if somebody was like dude you're crazy the, the driving in one is way worse than two I would say fair enough because if you mm-hmm. don't I get why you wouldn't like it it's just I played that so much as a kid that driving around Lytton was like it, you know it, I yeah. beat this to death but it really was that open world thing for me I'm like I could no, stop over at Carol's I could go to the courthouse exactly. Like, and it taught me how to read maps and and i had that whole map memorized i knew where everything was it was very important to me the driving is the best thing yeah and like as a, you know without like your only game to play or one of your only games to play and like as as like an eight-year-old or whatever to be like hey, i don't know what i'm gonna do today. i'm probably gonna head down to carol's um mm-hmm. see what's going on at the courthouse i guess after that um checking the boys at the station i mean i can't ignore them probably mm-hmm. take lunch over at the park um these were you know oh my gosh that feels so good just to hear you say that that's exactly how i felt about that stuff growing up because again i didn't my friends were playing it so the the game like oh my god is that what it was like in a way the people who made the game and the game itself was our friends and i had friends like i've always been a very social person i'm not like that but it's just when you're sitting at home at night and you're not hanging out with your friends and most people i knew were watching tv i was you know hanging out with um keith and you know smelling the cigarette smoke on his jacket or i was thinking (laughs) about jim walls and how wouldn't it be cool if he knocked on the door and said hey anna let's talk about police quest and i could like sit and hang out with him because that that's how sierra made me feel about the people that made the games yeah same absolute same a quick shout out to stairway to retro he gave the police quest 2 a 10 as well and i give it a 10 (laughs) too that's that's all yeah that's all three yeah police police quest was a big um yeah, big thing for me growing up. We really, we really liked those games. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's uh, I got, we got to give that. It's all right. That's tens, uh, <laughs> all all the tens and a nine. 
Okay, that brings us to, to the, the next month, December 1988. Leisure Suit Larry <laughs> goes looking for love in several wrong places. So Larry 2. Yeah, and um, I yeah, actually... Shade. Sorry. Yeah, she no, I, I really I really liked Leisure Suit Larry too. I think um I thought it was a beautiful game. I thought it, it did really good job with the close ups, its little vignettes when it would did do the close ups with the features. I mean, considering the color palette that they were working with at the time. Um I like it I think it's vibrant. They they made a lot of use of purple and blues throughout the game. Um like just on a visual, it was more comic book like than the first one. Like when you'd see some of the close ups, or for example, there's an explosion. Like I don't know when the bomb blows up. Um, that that kind of gave it the comic book feel. Um, sometimes you get these really cool perspectives, like Larry from mm -hmm. behind, or again back into those cutaways, the cutaways of the airplane, or or just I don't know when you're you're looking at what's her name the. Kalau or whatever, Kalalalu, the girl, the pretty <laughs> one with the, I don't know, the flower in her hair. It's like, I think they did a better job with looks. Like if I'm looking at that aspect, like it was a tricky game, but again, I was able to finish this game with no hints and no hint book all the way through. I never got a perfect score, but uh, I mean, the fact that you get married at the end of it, I mean, it, it just, it leaves you wanting to see what's going to happen in the next one. So I know this one doesn't rate as highly as the, uh, the third Leisure Suit Larry game, but uh, it's a solid nine for me. Wow. That's unexpected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I found her name and I still can't say it, by the way. Oh, oh I, I don't, I'm not looking right now, but I could, it's, I, it's, I played it's this Cal game a lot. It's Cal, I think Calalu, but it's spelled, it's C-A-L-A-A-U. So I don't know if it's Calalau. Or like Kalalu, yeah. because you get to see her topless. She's like, ah. <laughs> I love, yeah, I love that you're the one that had to bring that up. Ah, oh, I forgot. I was supposed to do a bit where I was gonna be like, yeah, because I got the can now, and you started like a Mugsy, <laughs> but I forgot because frankly, I was lost in your words. You know, lost in a, <laughs> a sea of linguistic bliss. I um, just I get so sentimental about the Leisure Suit Larry games because your whole again, tone changes. It goes all kind of like romantic <laughs> NPR. I get sentimental, you guys, and I just it's, it's, it's lovely. It's, in, it's it's intoxicating. Oh, good. I'm glad because yeah, I don't I don't think a lot of the people uh, rated. <laughs> did anybody even rate Leisure Suit Larry? much high high at all yes um and I, I i'm so sorry for the name pronunciation here because i don't i'm not confident in either name so it's either Joni or yanni mm -hmm. um and then the last name is grezikowski Grez mm -hmm. nope there's no there's no k i just put a k in there for no reason this is why we talk grezikowski 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 he's, he's one of our favorite Italian. Lovely, lovely person. But so is it Johnny, you think? Or is it? Mm. Oh, it could be, I don't, or jo it could be Johnny, Joni, or Yanni. Yeah, one of those, for sure. Right, that's fair. They're oh, all beautiful. Why are so we? I love oh, them right. All. He, 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 hi, if you're listening, thank you very much for your, for your scores. I'm so sorry for what I did to your name back there. <laughs> it, was, it was uncalled for. Um, he put Leisure Suit Larry at uh, nine. Right, right. At a 10. Second. Same Good as you. Too. So that's, that's, that's super high. Um, for me, um, what I think is, uh, I'm gonna give Leisure Suit Larry to. It's it's funny if I went before you, it would be a lower score. But you've mm -hmm. really got me excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. See, this is why you have me going first. I understand. Because I'm like, well, I don't want to give it a six or a seven. I mean, I think I like it more now. If she decided. Um, <laughs> Um, most recently, I played the AGS remake, a point-and-click mm -hmm. remake of this game. So just if, if anybody you know wants to mess around or whatever, you can head to adventuregamestudio.co.uk, and there's a point-and-click remake that's e extremely polished and and professional vibes. Like yeah, it's 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 basically Larry Two, but just with a with a point-and-click interface. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it a seven. Seven. Yeah, I'm gonna give it okay. a seven. I didn't love that. So I thought you were giving it a two. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez, no. Okay, no. I saw more than that. Um, oh good. Okay. Yay! Seven's nice. That makes me happy. Yeah, it was. It was between six or seven. You might have been the difference there, but but still, yeah. Because I did. I had fun playing the point and click version too, even though it goes against the spirit of this episode. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a seven. We're free to move. Uh, get through the holidays to March 1989. Um, 
when a ragtag, uh, ragtag, ragtag. A, a plucky <laughs> bunch of guys from from Andromeda, which is really far away. My kids having like a space phase right now, so I'm learning mm-hmm. a bunch of space facts. I'm probably learning these facts for like the thirteenth time. They just <laughs> never stick. You know, because yeah. it's all inconceivable numbers. So it's like, it's, it really serves me no purpose in being like, well, actually, Andromeda is 26 billion light years away. Like, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, sorry, the point is the Space Quest 3 is next. It came out in March of 89, <laughs> maybe. The Pirates of Pestilon. And right. your thoughts, please. Well, I mean, I've always thought of this game as divided up into colors. It's like you have blue and purple worlds. And then as you get like deeper into the game and things get kind of a bit heavier, you go into like the red worlds and then it goes back into like more red and blue. Like it's always been really colorful to me. Yeah. Um, right. It's it's fun. It's use yeah. of colors is unusual. It's otherworldly. Um, the fact that it brings the two guys from Andromeda in on the game. <laughs> <laughs> like the the in jokes the kind of like the meta-ness of it but it's like it's not all like humor from other games like the whole thing isn't based on satire humor like a lot of it's based on its own humor like i feel by the fourth one as much as i love it it kind of went more into like these are the things that a lot of people know about we can make jokes of it it's star tracker it's whatever but like i think this game it was funny in its own merit and, and its own ideas. And, and as scary as it might be, I, I loved the grids and the charts and thinking about the stars and, and flight patterns and programming stuff in. And like, I didn't find it tedious because I was into that game kind of thing. I liked flight simulators and I liked, I liked really weird thinking things. Um, Elmo Pug too. He's just the characters in this game, the way that it continued the story from the first one and led into the third one. I've always really liked this game. I like it so much. I'm offended that you implied that people find it tedious back there. What was that? (laughs) (laughs) It hits you though. It hits you right in the feels. It's just raunchy enough. It's just like, it's just, it's naughty. It's a little bit naughty. It's a little bit dangerous. It's kind of funny. It's a little bit meta. It, it brings the jokes in from all of Sierra. I think some of the thirds do that. Like we'll, we'll get into it later with another one of the third games in the series, but it's really, really good at just poking fun at who it is and, and just not taking things too seriously. It is so fun to look at as to your first point. Like I've been mm-hmm. quickly pulling up screenshots of these games as we're going along and, and the, the, the image results on, on just a Google search for space quest three, just immediate dopamine hit. Or it's just like, mm-hmm. just I, all the, the purple and blues and the, the, yeah, it's just fun to look at. It's got the, the Sierra headquarters at the end, which also ties into the other three on this list that, that we can get to where they both, they both do a masterful job of bringing Sierra into the game at the end. Um, and I, I just adore, I adore this game. I don't, I, I don't, have we ever done an episode just on space quest three? Oh my gosh, we should. Cause then we can talk about the postcards and, oh, and I love Fester Blatz. I think they brought him back in or at least a version of him in the sixth space quest game of it. Oh my God. My kid a while ago wanted to do, Sturmer wanted to do like a, like a EXE video for anybody listening. There's like, you know, I think Sonic EXE is what started it, but it's like a, a horror short, just terrible YouTube brain rock kind of videos where, where they take, you know, a beloved IP and do like a quick horror thing with it. And he wanted to do an EXE. Um, so we did a Sonic EXE in our own house. And when he watched it, it, it scared the shit out of him. I, <laughs> I fucked that one up. I might've dropped the ball there. I, I just, <laughs> whoops. I mean, the, the whole, there's no book on how to parent. Sometimes it's like, you know, where's the line between, you know, fear and trauma. And sometimes you just, you just find that out where you're just like, okay, that was, we're past the line. That was, he's going to remember this for three years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway, um, we put so much work into the filming of it. All right. I'm exaggerating for, for you. I mean, it wasn't that, that horrifying. He would refuse to watch it ever again. So it's somewhere in there. Anyway, look, listen, back to Fle- Fluster, Fluster Blatz, Fester Blatz. <laughs> um, we recut the video using Fester instead of Sonic. Nice. Um, so for anybody listening, if you want to see it, I don't, I, I'm not necessarily recommending it, but you can go on YouTube and just, just Google like Fester Blatz e- EXE. I use Google mm-hmm. instead of search there. That was stupid. Go to YouTube and search Fester Blatz.exe. 
Um, and if you actually do do that, leave, leave, leave a like for my kid. Every now and then he looks at his, his YouTube and gets excited when there's a new <laughs> like. Very, we have a low bar here for, for YouTube likes, as you know, from our podcast not being on it. It's not, not really much in our lives. But anyway, back to Space Quest 3. I have so much to say about it that I'd rather just do a dang episode on it someday. So Yeah, let's do that. Can we just talk for one second, though? Like, okay, for the fact that Arnoid is in it, obviously, because all of us were in the Terminator or whatever else, that was awesome. But that, like, the one shot that's always stuck in my head, like, and there's a lot of shots I like from this game, but, you know, when you're first caught, and like Arnold yeah. has you and, and the pinks and the purple and the expression, the close up on the face. Cause this is the first kind of space quest game where they really started getting in with these close ups and you're seeing it in, in this whole new cartoon like perspective. Like everything about that is so much of what is my favorite thing about this era. The, and that's a, the particular portrait close up that you use to to springboard into that is is phenomenal because it's a, mm -hmm. the Arnold whatever the Arnold robot and he's like looking at his his um debrief like his his mm -hmm. mission um and you see that reflected backwards in his glasses yeah. it's just it's like that was that was straight cinema at the time mm -hmm. like for, really for a computer game yeah yeah so it's it's really hard for me to not give all of these tens, and I am having to think very hard about this. But uh, yeah, I mean, dude, this is this is <laughs> oh man, yeah, this is game is is a ten. It is freaking good, man. Yeah, man. So, well, I I gave us this breathing space in the beginning by saying SCI zero, and maybe that that was for everybody's conclusion to draw on your own by the end of this. But it does seem like a special group of games here um that were that were exceptional quick shout outs to to um to um classic gamers guild facebook members um justin quinlan i don't mm -hmm. think i messed that up maybe it's more smooth like quinlan i don't know um and terry dylan they both gave space quest 3 um a 10 uh, terry said that it's straight up the best game of all time if anybody mm -hmm. see me on video you see the giant poster behind me so i'm, I'm mm -hmm. inclined to agree um Justin said that he tries to play it at least once a year. And Justin, I love that. I really do. Because me and my kid play a Space Quest every Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, really, my birthday is Christmas Eve, so that's why I always say that. But it's a, mm -hmm. for, for my birthday, my gift to me is making my kid play a Space Quest with me. And it always has, even when he just sat there with like a bottle and couldn't speak yet. It was a thing. So, uh, yeah, anybody who plays it once a year, I, I like that. It's very, very cozy thought. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that's that's just more lots of tens. Yep. So here's the thing, and I want to I want to just say I'm sorry to anybody who didn't understand the question that could have rated more of their games as a 10. Maybe you wouldn't have said 1 to 10. Maybe you would have said these three are a 10 and, and that. And that's fine. Uh, I understand that. But luckily, um, this is just a podcast episode. So. Yeah, this is just the rehearsal. No, we, we, we're going to get <laughs> this. We're going to have this all figured out by the time there's nothing left to rank. That's what we right. decided. We're like, yeah, come the we'll last one. We're going to know because we forgot to ask our Patreons too. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. We yeah. were proud of ourselves for remembering our, our Hotspot Network friends at the last mm -hmm. second. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, stay tuned to the very end. We're going to give the rankings of One Short Eye and Space Quest Historian and Joshua Cleveland and let you know what their rankings were because, mm -hmm. you know. If you guys do the adventure, any adventure YouTube stuff, you know those those characters. You want to know what they got to say, and we have mm -hmm. the bloody exclusive. So we I regret do. that, but anyway, let's move on to the next one, um, which is October 1989. Um, getting into spooky season here, and the Colonel's bequest. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so, a bunch of heavyweights, man. You can't fuck with us, Zero. <laughs> no, this is this is a big deal, and and Colonel's bequest is is great because, I mean, if I was to choose a game for somebody who had never really played a Sierra game and wanted a game where they could feel like they were progressing, even if they weren't, and get a final score at the end, no matter what happens, even if they didn't figure out the mystery, the Colonel's Bequest is typically where I guide them, as long as you're okay with a parser game. it's It's got, again, it's it does amazing work with the cutaways. It's outdoor scenes. It's night scenes are just out of this world it does a lot of play like one of the things i like about this game is the way that it plays with shadows especially outside shadows coming off of trees some of the trees in the shadow the foreground the background um i don't know the the personalities like the maid fifi and and just like 
so much of this game to me is reminiscent of one of the other games that are on this list that I won't say yet so that this can be interesting and a surprise. But, ah, man, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful game, Paul, isn't it? Uh, well, yes, it is, Anna, and I'm glad that you brought that up because <laughs> it's <laughs> it's remarkable that I, I was just thinking it's, it's crazy that, that I'm, this might be the second best looking game in SCI Zero, and that's insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so good looking. And, and like it's, I would I would guess that if we were to take like a popular uh, like a vote on this, I don't know where popular came from just then, but if we were to take a vote on this, it'd probably almost easily get voted the most good looking SCI Zero game. I just I just have an affinity for Space Quest Three, but mm -hmm. it like technically speaking is probably better. Um, right. If they, I mean if for nothing else, just the way it really kind of I don't want to say introduced lighting, but it definitely took lighting to another level as far as what they were doing with it back then, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I, I'm usually wrong um, as far as like earlier examples. I don't know. But but anyway, it's it's an unbelievably gorgeous game. Um, yeah, it's, it's like you had said earlier. Sorry, I really wanted to remember that and I did it the last second. Yay. Yay. You said a second ago that, that it was the game you'd recommend, but then you're like, if not for the text parser. And I've had that exact same hang up because it's like, I think we've talked about this before. It's like, what is the... What's the Sierra game for Lucas people? Um, mm -hmm. Especially when we first started this podcast and we were having, not first started, but in the earlier days when we were doing a, a ton of interviews and having a lot of indie devs come on, a lot of them were from Europe or the UK where Sierra didn't didn't make it that far as, as commonly as, as Lucas did. Um, and there was like lots of lots of people who hadn't ever played a Sierra game yet. So, And I think that's what started it. It might've even specifically been Michael at um, Yaks Wax Lips where we were trying to, at the end of our interview with him, we were, like, we were trying to pin down exactly what he should play. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, I would say Colonel's Bequest if it wasn't for the parser, because it's just, the, I think the parser is a bit of a firewall for people that, that didn't grow up with it. But like, they're willing to try it, but it's, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, and I've heard from the people that have tried it, it's like, they like it, but they'll never do it again. They're like, that mm -hmm. was a fun, weird novelty. And mm -hmm. the end. And if, you know, it, it was, yeah, it's like a novelty, I guess, if you, if you don't have experience with it. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I guess I'm, all that is to say is that it's 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 one of Sierra's absolute best games. Like I, I really, I'm, n I'm not sure we've ever forced each other to like come up with the best Sierra game, or, or at least in this context, like it's. I usually say Colonel's Bequest or Gabriel Knight, as far mm -hmm. as like, yeah, the the best moments of Sierra. Like, yeah, I love Gold Rush, but like I'm not going to actually suggest that to, to, to somebody not unless they're prepared for it like right you know. right exactly, literally yeah. yeah exactly right um anyway yeah chrono's bequest it's 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 a it's a really fun game it's the kind of game that that it's it's like the the challenge of it without a walkthrough is is it holds up really well with, without mm -hmm. a walkthrough is i think mm -hmm. what, I'll, what i'll what i'll end on yeah um i i have to give it a 10 i'm sorry mm -hmm. no that's fair absolutely okay Okay, so I never have finished it yet with a full score because I never put a word for this game. I only played it just using my brain and trying to play it. So I, I, there's still potential for me to keep playing this game is the point. And I think I've done that on purpose. I've left right. it. And I mean, you know, if you don't play a game for a year or two, you kind of forget stuff anyways, right? But once you know how to play a game, like, for example, if I roll up and, and play one of the Space Quest games or something, like, I know how to finish it. I may not get a perfect score every time, whatever, but I'm going to fly right through it. Well, the Colonel's Bequest, I'm going to fly right through it, but it's still a challenge for me to find all of the things that I've missed. So that, I mean, the replayability after this long of time, the, the progression of time in it, uh, but, you know, the text parser, which obviously didn't take away from my ratings of any of the other games, I'm probably putting, but it wasn't one of like my big <laughs> passions. I never became obsessed with it. It was never one of my first games or anything. So like, I, I guess I'm giving it a nine. I mean, an eight. I'm giving it an eight. Yeesh. Okay. Yeah, an eight. That's very yeah. unexpected. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. I like that. Like, yeah, that's that's fun. Something something I wasn't at all prepared for. I really thought that was a shoe in nine ten from you. Shout out to our Gilder friends Amber Thut and Joshua Smith, who both put Colonel's Bequest way up there. Amber gave it a ten. Joshua gave it a nine. So mm -hmm. that is Colonel's Bequest. Now we're moving on to the holiday season, nineteen eighty nine. Um, all the young little Sierra fans were about to get blessed with <laughs> just one of the greatest Christmas gifts of all time. 
a little gem we like to call code name Iceman. <laughs> For some now, here's the <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I forgot you you can think things without saying them. It's my bad. <laughs> I'm just saying that this is a trickier one because uh, a lot of people haven't played it. Yes, including us. Well, I've I've played half of it. Half of it? To up to the submarine? Well, up until the sub, yeah. Right, that's fair. Well, that's something. So tell us about your first half of it. <laughs> well, I started playing it and I was like, oh, holy shit, finally, it's Leisure Suit Larry 4, because that's what I've been waiting for at the time, uh, obviously. Because by like I played, I know Larry Leisure Suit Larry three came out later, but I I didn't get Codename Iceman till later on, like after three was out and before that I played five or anything else. So I thought like when the beach scene and everything came on at the beginning, it was going to be a sexy game. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a little bit funny, too. Like I I don't know, it looked like a Larry game or something. So <laughs> I was I was pretty sure that it was going to end up being a funny game. What it like is, did you know anything about it before you played it? You're like, I don't know. I was expecting to have a good time with it, but fuck me. I guess it's not meant to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, I found it like it was just, it was not as tongue in cheek as some of the other games that I like to play. I'm like, it's beautiful. Some of the scenes are beautiful, but it's also quite simplistic. Like, like, I know now that what happened was Jim said to the guy that was doing the coding for the submarine, he's like, hey, take this manual for running a submarine and follow exactly what it says and, and make it so that's what the player has to do. So instead of changing it or simplifying it to become a game mechanic, they they tried to be more authentic with what it was. And so when it came back... It, timing issues, uh, not being on period correct hardware. There, there's so many reasons why, even if you had a walkthrough sitting right in front of you, you wouldn't be able to get through that scene. And I think right. like, if you take that away, it's an absolutely beautiful game. Like uh, you, there's a point where there's a Russian destroyer and, and, you know, you're riding into the sunset. Um, like the outdoor scenes are really, really well done, but I, I feel like the indoor scenes in this game have always been lacking a little bit of love. Well, it has that kind of uh, police quest to Leisure Suit Larry 2 art aesthetic. Like it um, can almost follow Sierra through through times and see, you can usually find two or three games that, that are very similar in vibe. That they were just mm -hmm. like obviously made at this like back to back like like the color palettes or they've been they have been like an influence that went around the office recently and it kind of just leaks into into the games and anyway Larry two and Ice uh, Iceman almost looks like Larry two and Police Quest put together art wise mm -hmm. yeah I feel good about that actually it looks just like that um, like 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 Police Quest two on the beach um, you had said a second ago like what did I expect from it and when I was around at the time I didn't. I don't think we had this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember it at all. Let's just say, but, but like, you know, once you get re re indoctrinated into Sierra, you know, I think for a lot of us, it probably had to do with like Facebook becoming a thing or like, you know, back, back in the day, back for our own Renaissance, um, whenever that happened to each of us and you rediscover things and you find out there were like games that you missed growing up. Um, mm -hmm. And so Iceman was one of those. And so like, you know, I looked at him before I'd heard, what to you know expect from it or heard about the submarine part or whatever i was just like oh this is cool this is going to be like a international spy thriller like like police quest mm -hmm. but like international and like more there's more at stake and you know just i don't know I, I guess i was thinking like you know an american james bond sort of situation um and i don't know if it is because i haven't played it so there's that but you had also said to touch on the the submarine part that even a walkthrough doesn't help um and I, I, that just made me think, like, maybe I should hop on, like, Sierra Help or just do a search for it and see if there's, like, save games. Because there mm -hmm. usually are. And you can usually download the save games. Like, I know in Space Quest Six, it was helpful back in the day to grab the save games to get past, like, one of the infamous bugs mm -hmm. in a room I can't easily describe them quickly. So we'll just skip it. But point being is, like, there's been other times with Sierra games where, like, I've used the save game to get past something. Granted, usually point. it's a bug. But, but in this mm -hmm. case, like, just to try and enjoy the story without letting frustration kind of creep in and ruin it. 
Um, maybe I should just like arm myself with a save game, play it, enjoy it for as much as I can, just skip the, the submarine after clicking a few buttons to no avail and get it done that way. Like, that's a good idea, actually. I might do that. Here, Okay, here's the thing with this game. I'm, I'm now just, I've just pulled up some screenshots of this game because I didn't get far enough in it to kind of have an idea about all of it. And there's a scene where you're deep sea diving, just like in Police Quest 2. Right. It is not the same. It is not as pretty. It is simply not as nice. It's like there's the dithering isn't as, as detailed or it doesn't look as realistic. Like it almost feels like they put so much effort into authenticity that they kind of skipped a little bit on the graphical side as far as looks go. It's, it's just not as creatively interesting. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Because earlier I equated it more to, to, well, I was saying it's like Larry 2 and Police Quest 2, but <laughs> it's, it is, there, there's another scene where he's like walking on outside and there's like some storefronts and they're, they're actually pretty bad looking. Um, although this is cutting room floor, maybe this didn't make it in the game. No, it did. Yeah. There's like these plain beige wall buildings that he walks past and like the rocks mm -hmm. are extremely plain. The walls are extremely plain, like really actually kind of shockingly bad. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize. It's not good. It, it feels it's not me. good. Right. Like there's another part where there's, they're in the city. There's another part in oh, Stacy's apartment later on there. There's another part where they're walking through. It's just, it's lacking. Um, okay, there's like a switchback road later on in the game and there's like a chase scene and stuff. And it's like, I feel like they just copy pasted something in there and didn't even bother to make it look good. Like, and it could like the compound later on in the game, it could look good, but they just, somebody didn't care. It could, right. They just forgot to care. I hate when that yeah. happens. I mean, it, it, a lot of us are used to like just seeing that opening scene where he's sitting on the beach and the huts and, mm -hmm. and, the, and that looks nice. Mm -hmm. um, but the more you dig, it just, it's, it, it quickly goes really downhill. It's, it would almost be an interesting case study to put code name, code name Iceman next to police quest too, because mm -hmm. if you were to squint in your eyes, they're quite similar. But mm -hmm. when you really look like, you know, it, it would beg the question of like, why, why did I claim the police quest two is so highly clickable? Like what, what mm -hmm. about a, a little environment makes you want to click it versus Iceman? Cause like, for example, that both these games have a hotel room and, mm -hmm. and there's nothing about the Iceman one that looks fun. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. three giant plain yellow walls with a bed, a mirror and something else. Like it's not fun. It's not. And even the puzzles, they're kind of like, mm -hmm, like, boring a little bit half, half of the action yeah half of the actual gameplay i think is like in the manual itself it's not even in the game there's just there's so much to it the sequences are they're not always like, like in order like it can be a little bit frustrating in general well um a few notes from from listeners like from uh johnny joni or yanni I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. Good, good old JG, you know, he mm -hmm. said, um, the code name, he put code name Iceman above Colonel's bequest and mm -hmm. King's quest for, um, and Camelot. And I'm not trying to publicly shame him right now. Like, cause, cause it could almost sound like that if you wanted it to, he actually says it's better. And, and but, but what it does is it gives me hope in playing this game. I think it might've been Sean McCauley is another Gilder who, who also kind of backed this up. No, that was, that was Gabriel Knight three. Regardless, well, it's, it's nice to see that he ranks this higher than, than Colonel. Like it's not automatically at the bottom. Like there's, there's hope. Somebody out there had a good, had a good enough time with it. Well, you saw what Ash Amin from uh, the classic gamers guild said uh, that it actually helped him pass his first, uh, first aid course in real life because of the learning from the manual right that's pretty that's pretty awesome actually right so it was actually useful mm -hmm. so it might not be fun but it's useful <laughs> and that's not nothing so my personal ranking for this game though unfortunately is at a three and i would love to rank it higher and maybe one day i will finish it with the save file and change my mind okay well, I'm going to put down your three and mine. Uh, I don't have a score because I haven't played it. So the community mm -hmm. will speak on my behalf. Um, 
And that moves us on to number seven, which is Heroes Quest, So You Want to Be a Hero, from uh, also the, the same month. It, it mm-hmm. came and saved Christmas. Mm-hmm. It really did. So um, you've played this game before, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, sort of. Yeah, right? I, I walk. I, I walk. I used to walk through playing it in my Jeep on a mobile. Mm-hmm. It, it was the least immersed I've ever been in a game in my life because of the, because of the environment. Like it really, it wasn't the game's fault. It was just like I, I was learning why you shouldn't play adventure games on a whim in a car on a mobile <laughs> and a mm-hmm. few other factors at the same time. But yeah, I did technically get through it. Right. So um, you might have heard from me before talking, um, but this this game is like if I take away the nostalgia of Quest or of King's Quest Four being my first game entirely, uh, Quest for Glory One easily is in my first favorite ever for so many reasons. I mean, outside of the stat building, it was the sense of discovery. It was the sense of humor. It was it was the dithering in the forests and on the ground. Every single environment is dithered with so much care. And um, like Erasmus's house is whimsical. It's all pink and purple. And he's got a pet that tells you jokes like a pet rat, which is amazing. Arena's piece is comforting. The battle scenes are vibrant and beautiful. And you can just spam it. Like there's no real skill to the battle scenes. You're just like hit forward over, 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 over. And if you're powerful enough, you know, you're going to survive it. It has a day night cycle. It has Baba Yaga in it because I'm, of Russian heritage. So I grew up with stories of this witch to, so to finally play a game where you get to interact with her, get her hut of brown to sit down and go into it is, is like nothing else I've ever experienced. I don't get the chance to talk about this game very much because Paul hasn't played it very much. I disagree. I feel like this comes up just too much. (laughs) (laughs) And then the brigand warlock at the end of the game, the changing of the characters (laughs) and just, I could, the graphics of of the food that you eat you know when you have to buy a bunch of apples and give it to broggy the oh the mage's maze is a game i love that if you're a magic user you get to play this like game with fenris and uh even just the the character selection screen this is a funny interesting engaging game that is uh 20 out of 10 if i could um okay so it's a 10. (laughs) Um, well, it, this is it's it's obviously a, a beloved game for for the whole community because because Ash Amon mm-hmm. has it at at ten, um, Joshua Smith has it at ten. Um, giving big old ums in between these, trying to sc- scroll quickly. Um, man, J- I use the find find J- J- feature. J- JG <laughs> gives it a ten. Nice. No. Um, it's it's got the most tens from our from our listeners than mm-hmm. than any other game does by far. Woo! Because you know what, this game touches you on a different level. Like you're not just playing through it like a King's Gross. Quest game. You can live. Yeah, you can live. You can die. You can get <laughs> hungry. You can gain skills. You can be like, you know what, I'm going to spend time throwing rocks all day. And then at the end of the day, you're better at throwing rocks. Like there's a sense of achievement. There's no other game series out there that I know of that connects to the next game when you're picking your character up and gently placing it in an import disc. And then not only do they carry over, but their stuff carries over, except for when you start four because you've lost your stuff. But that's like a storyline thing. It's supposed to happen that way. So I don't really think there's anything else out there. Right. Like this. At well, all. You had me at, you can throw rocks all day and you'll get mm-hmm. better at throwing rocks. That it's was, true. In that moment, I knew <laughs> I want to be a professional rock thrower. <laughs> but it's fair. It's reasonable. Um, and okay. Like I just, I need to do this for my own. Okay. okay. So when you play the game the first time and you're a kid, say you're me, I was like, what's the best way to do it? So I I formulated a plan with my dad as to which order to play it in because there's a lot. So like the first time I play this game, I play it as a fighter because it's basic and it's the easiest. Eventually you can be a paladin in later games, but it's the most straightforward fight slash you're good. 
And then I play it again as a magic user because it's it's a little bit trickier than the fighter because you can't get as good at fighting, but you can still get super strong, but you can use magic on things. And then the trickiest one and the most exciting one is playing through as a thief because then you can break into places and see all the scenes you couldn't see when you were a magic user or a fighter because all of a sudden, after playing the game through twice as two different characters, a whole different world opens up where there's a, a secret thieves guild and codes and all these characters you've never met before and you know all of a sudden the the old man or the old lady uh you can or the sheriff's house you're going to break into it at night and see what's really going on and then you get all these extra chances to get killed which is also fun because there's so many ways to die in this game tell me that's not awesome ah it's crazy um <laughs> <laughs> No, it does sound fun. Mm -hmm. That's the word. That is the, that is the exact word I was looking for. I told Paul if he didn't want to take the time to play the game and play it through all the times, and hey, somebody tell us that this is a good idea, because I think it is. I told him, yes, that he could jump onto Discord and watch me play the first game, and then he'd, he'd sort of get the, the whole feels for it that way, and it wouldn't take very long, because I've played through it so many times. It would take it would take a long. There would be Anna director's commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should put it on YouTube then. <laughs> um, no, that actually that does sound like fun. I, I was mm -hmm. um, I wasn't expecting you to, to go that direction. I thought it was going to be something where like I had to play it myself. To which you know, gross and no thank you. But if you were playing it, I, mm -hmm. no, I, I I shit on it in jest. Um, yes, because. I, yeah, I, I I look forward to liking this game one day. I think I will. It's made mm -hmm. by this little this company that makes a few games. Don't know if you ever heard of them. Big fan of them. I'm sure I'm gonna like it. It it is. In all seriousness, I think part of my delay has well, it's two part. One is that it means so much to Anna, and really to to a, a lot of our listeners too. That I, I don't want it to be one of those games where like I just get through it Friday night for a Saturday episode. Mm -hmm. which I have done for some of these comparison things, but, but with those games, it's like, I've, I've played them, like immersed myself in them before. So I think mm -hmm. a lot of it is me like waiting to be able to give it attention. But the other part is a little bit of, uh, that it can sometimes feel overwhelmingly gate kept just because mm -hmm. of the amount of lore. And like, anytime you enter a fantasy world of this scope, everything has a different name, right? Like you mm -hmm. don't, you don't call the lion looking thing, a lion, like it's going to be a type of, like Shamin or whatever. It's like, it's mm. this very specific type of creature in this world. And, and they come from a long line of said creatures and these are what they're good at. And it's like, it's like a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot to, to, to get into, but I'm, it's going to happen. Everyone will see, you'll see. So I, I didn't know that, like, for example, the Caddo, they, they wasn't creatures that everybody knew about. Like this wasn't just a regular thing. So I'd bring it up like with my friends and, and explain it. And they'd be like, that's not real. That doesn't exist. And it's like, it doesn't even exist mythologically. And because Sierra is so obscure, my friends all just thought I was crazy. Right. Right. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> all these years later, it's still happening. <laughs> it is. I did. I had a conversation with my mom when I mentioned some of the, the cat, I think, from it. And she's like, what is that? And she goes to the Internet and she's like, I keep looking it up, but I'm not seeing it. I'm like, oh, add the keyword. Quest for right. Glory well, things, Sierra. Like, things like Baba Yaga, like it, it sets you up to expect it to be a real thing because Baba Yaga is. But it, they both right. have a ridiculous name and only one of them is true or, you know, mm -hmm. in popular folklore. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the other thing too. It's, it's when people converse about quest for glory, like like thirty percent of the words they'll say amongst themselves, you don't understand on the outside. Mm -hmm. Like when you mm -hmm. and Ryan Slats were talking about it, you're the, the, like, well, Kat has said to Baba Yaga to say mean that the you know I can't keep that going because I don't know well enough. Um, but you know, mm -hmm. point being is like it, it's it's that kind of world where, where it's it has its own lingo to a sense. Mm -hmm. It's it's like. Um, I don't know. I used, to, I used to cynically always feel like a large part of having to go to school for most p professions was just to learn their specific lingo because that's right. how they, you know, gatekeep you out of being a 
I don't know, lawyer, doctor, or something. I don't know. I, I shouldn't have given any examples because that sounds like I just plumber, truck driver. It doesn't matter. Any one of those, right? Really exactly. They've all got their own. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like, if a lawyer takes the trucker's test and the trucker takes the lawyer's test, well, they're both stupid now. It's a very like yes, exactly, exactly, and they're both very important to the functioning of society, and we, we love you guys. Mm-hmm. But but it's like it's very. I think humans we do it on purpose because we like it. We mm-hmm. like being like, oh, you know, the old pentatonic scale. What you don't know what mm-hmm. that is? Well, you got to, you know, it's like you, there's mm-hmm. something that feels good about the, I don't know, the earned knowledge, um, mm-hmm. but whatever. Okay. Anyway, the quest for glory, Anna gives it a ten. So does most people. Um, I'm gonna play it. You'll see. But I wanted to bring up before we move on to number eight here, and we're almost at the end. Um, is Quest for Glory too. A lot of a lot of the guilders and our friends were were puzzled to to not see it on the SCI Zero list because it is EGA parser, let's say. Um, but Quest for Glory two was made with SCI one point one zero five, and it's the mm-hmm. only game to have been made um, not only on that specific interpreter version of of CR, whatever SCI, um, but it's also the only SCI one game that's a parser. So it's got some mm-hmm. some oddities about it, but the point being is that it's not technically SCI zero, um, so you know it 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 don't belong here. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, number eight, Leisure Suit Larry three, Passionate Patty in Pursuit of the Pulsating Pectorials, <laughs> which yeah. is a great, and it's another game that really plays on themes of color depending on where you are. You're in green areas, you're in purple areas, you're in blue areas. They do more work with cutaways, but then they do kind of like. They do portraits differently. Um, like if you recall, you get to meet Dale the stripper and it's kind of like his portrait merged into a pink background or or even going into the bamboo maze where, you know, we had Al Lowe on the podcast and he talked about just taking the same screen and flipping it in all those different ways so that he could use up less energy and disk space and, and have all that happen. Um so on on that it's 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 a beautiful game it's it's a different game it's it's funny because i think it's the first sierra game that i ever encountered where you could do a character switch where all of a sudden you become somebody else and i had no idea that was going to happen mm-hmm. it was just like all of a sudden i was the girl in the game the girl that larry had been lusting over and like me as a player i'm lusting after her too obviously and so all of a sudden i get to be that woman that that's a <laughs> that's a really satisfying moment and, and they even mess around with you they mess around with the deaths um hey i like patty so much i dressed up as passionate patty for one of my costumes at the hot spot uh convention so yeah obviously a lot of respect and i mean i'm not even taking into account the way that they didn't just break the fourth wall down at the end of the game they they like smashed the fourth wall down at the end of the game because this was meant to be the last game in the series so when you're all done and you think everything is done you literally drop out of the game and into the the set of police quest or or where they keep the props or uh robert is sitting there directing uh on king's quest 4 or they're like very very and they're literally doing the programming on the game on like a mini computer screen or, or they go to the the space quest set i think in there too you get you quit the game from there there's just ah it, they did such a good job with this game paul <laughs> yeah it's 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 my favorite larry game for sure and it's it's there is something really it's oddly um, satisfying about switching to Patty in a way that I can't explain. And also in a way that, that is, is more some uh, undefinably meaningful because it's Larry and because both characters are sexualized. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know how to even articulate what I'm thinking right now. Cause I, I haven't thought about it before, but there's just something about like, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's because of the, the power dynamic that, that you finally get to be the female when you've been, you know, just getting the bloody business given to you as Larry for three games. I'm not sure what it is, but it's, it's incredibly rewarding to be Patty in this game. And mm-hmm. I, I didn't know it was going to happen. So it wasn't a surprise for me, but the surprise for me with Larry was I revisited it um, a couple of years ago, like three or four years ago. And this and King's Quest Four were the two games I walked away from. Like, wow, those are really, really good games. Like, mm-hmm. like n- without nostalgia being in the picture at all. Obviously, there's like a there's a bias because they're my types of games and they're Sierra games, and there's a, there is a lot of like let's say handicaps or unfair advantages. But like these, both of those games 
and specifically on topic Larry three, like when I, when I was finished playing that, I remember just sitting back at me and like, that was so fun. Like, mm-hmm. I'm so mad it's over. Like it was, I was so bummed out that it was, it had to come to an end, even though it was a satisfying ending, probably possibly one of the best endings to a Sierra game in, in all of its satisfactions. You're seeing like the cardboard cutaways, you know, of all the other Sierra games, like the, the props, let's say of, of this other Sierra games, specifically the SCI zero games. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like all your favorite games have like their props in the background and, and, and obviously that's just like a tiny little part that's not even of the gameplay, but the, the game itself is, is a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, yeah, holds up really well. Favorite Larry game. Um, I'm seeing from the community that, that it's, it's odd to me, but almost everybody that's chipped in here, um, except for Mark Gan- Ganoin. Mm-hmm. Gan- 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 so Mark was like the only one that put it at uh, put it above Leisure Suit Larry Two. Everybody mm-hmm. else put Larry Two ahead of Larry Three, mm-hmm. and I find that odd. Do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, just because of the ending. I always thought automatically that Larry Three was rated higher by most people. I just think it's such a better game. Mm-hmm. Which it's it's weird to me because Larry Two to, to me is is one of the lesser in the CR entries where I'm just like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's fine. It's, it's not bad. It's just, it's, it's fine. And then Larry three to me was like, you know, remarkable. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so th- this one's a little harder for me to even to understand than, than usual. I don't know. I don't know why mm-hmm. I, I, I'd be actually curious why it may, maybe the maze. I don't know, mm-hmm. but um, all right, well, anyway, let's rank it and, and start to wrap this, this thing up. What do you give it? Uh, well, I mean, considering I gave uh, Leisure Suit Larry to a nine, I'm and I like this one slightly better. It's got to be a ten. Right. What about you? This is where it's hard because I I I think I like Police Quest two and Space Quest three better than this game. Hmm. But I I, it's so close to a ten. But, but because in respect to those two games, I think I have to give it a nine. Right. That's fair. Um, all right. We're going to do the next two just kind of more quick fiery. Um, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to go out on too much of a whimper here as we lose energy getting through this, but Kings and, and the last two are, yeah, they're, they're, you'll see. So mm-hmm. Kings quest one quest for the crown. It's, it's a remake. It's not the VGA remake, right? Cause we're, we're not, in, we're still in EGA, but it's the SCI remake of, king's quest we both well, we just recently did did a whole episode comparing comparing those two maybe i should just hand this whole part off to that but um if you haven't checked out that episode check it out um and regardless we could definitely at least rank it mm-hmm. so man the end of larry 3 even has the stage for space quest 2 or it does i think it's space quest 2's intro um where you walk on the ceiling it's so cool Okay, sorry, sorry. So, so well, King's- Larry is really good with innovative angles. I think every single Larry game plays around with angles in a way you wouldn't expect. Right, like when you're looking up mm-hmm. at his taint and ball sack in the shower. Yes, I yeah. love that. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be crass. That's just that is descriptively correct. That is mm-hmm. what you're looking at, and it's like wow, they drew that. That's wild. Well, okay, so um, the king's quest one remake to me always was extremely reminiscent and i mentioned this during our other episode of quest for glory especially like when they're doing the the work in the cave when you're exiting the dragon's lair there's stalagmites and stalactites a lot of the color schemes that are there so yeah it's very much of its time period and if it was how i came across king's quest the first time maybe i would have been a little bit more engaged than just like how King's Quest one originally was. So I would even like in the witch's house, it's very, very quest for glory. So like, I'm not rating this high because I've never been a huge fan of the first King's Quest game in general, but I would certainly rate this higher than I would rate the first King's Quest game. So I'd, I'd put this at a solid six. Um, it's, Okay. Speaking for the community real quick, this is this game was played the least out of everybody that submitted something. Um, mm-hmm. Iceman was played slightly more than this, which is fair. I mean, that's that's the reputation of the remakes, right? 
is that they're, they're largely just skipped over. Um, I don't, I, we've covered this in the episode. I don't have nostalgia for the first one. So I, I, I kind of like the remake a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I felt the first two King's Quest are, they were so old and early. It's just so much green and yellow mm -hmm. uh, that it's not. It's just not that fun to look at. So, so I, <laughs> just on those bases, did I like the remaster better? Um, I'm gonna go six as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of figured you'd be around there. Okay, yeah. maybe five, but I, I, I guess six. So why not? Anyway, um, last one is mixed up Mother Goose, and I don't know if this one really belongs on the list because. There was a version of Mother Goose for everything. Um, this mm -hmm. is the second version of Mother Goose. There was there was a mix of Mother Goose for just AGI, um, which is the one that that I grew up with. And then there there's this one, the SCI Zero version, which is just like a slight bump up in quality. And then there's a VGA version, and then there's a CD-ROM version. And all four mm -hmm. of them have different uh, artistic style, not styles, but characteristics. And this one is the least necessary. <laughs> because it's just not that different from AGI to have really warranted it, considering that the VGA ones are quite a step up. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. Did anybody? And not nobody really ranked it much either, or if they did, they ranked it quite low. So you could almost strike it off the list as being we're much too grown up for this game today. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're, we're good we're gonna we're gonna just not on that so we before we compile we forgot we forgot conquest Con 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 camelot <laughs> that i mean have you even played that game Paul? I, I have not but anna i hear tell that you've both played and enjoyed it yeah, I did. You know what? It's a pretty game and it's based in lore. And even though it doesn't have the humor I would generally expect, it was it was funny and good enough that it kept me engaged. And I completed the game, a game with no hint book. And um, to me, what has stuck out over the years of playing it when I was younger is... Uh, the riddles, because in the game, you would get these riddles from a stone and, and you had to answer them to progress. And I actually had to figure out what the riddles were and, and how to answer them with the help of my family. So it was like the whole processing of things. And so like it's it was a beautiful game. It was the arcade sequences when you were playing it on a t period appropriate computer were fun. Like now it can be a little bit tricky with the timing, but but back then it was fun. So like it was never one of my favorite, favorite, favorite games, but it's uh, it's such a beautiful box too. And it and it's so well thought out. And I, I actually liked it better than Conquest of the Longbow when I was younger. Like it was the one that I preferred. I never finished Conquest of the Longbow. Uh, I found it a little bit difficult. Now that I've learned more about it and I have played it all the way through, I can understand why I thought it was so tricky. But Conquest of Camelot was easy enough just to finish on my own as a you know, probably young teenager at the time. So I'm, I'm going to rate this one at an eight. Okay. My thoughts on it are I've been saving this one. Um, just, just in that, that way that, that you would savor things like the, the asshole kid in class who doesn't eat their candy and then waits until the class eats theirs. And then they pull it out and just nurse it in front of you. That's, that's what I'm doing. Cause I, I, the parser error to me, I, and to your point earlier about longbow, I think we both have a, a bit of a, I don't know, presupposition to like the parser games a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. It's really hard to compare and rank and just definitively be like, yes, I like parsers more. It, it, that's not what this is about. But I think we tend towards them, towards the parsers. Um, but anyway, for, for this, for the same reason that you might put Camelot above Longbow is the reason I've kind of been savoring it because I'm told not to expect great things from Iceman. So that kind of rules that out. And Mm -hmm. That leaves the quest for glory games to to really be like enjoyed and immersed in, but they I I can't help but categorize them as, as as you know not pure adventure games, right? There there is RPG elements. So so to me, like this is the last pure parser Sierra game for for me to play that I haven't played, and so I'm like mm -hmm. really just basking in that and waiting for the moment to just like yeah really. Really enjoy it. But I'll say for the community, um, a Gilders, Jeremy Brown gave this a 10. This was his favorite. Um, mm -hmm. And it's he's the only one that ranks it as, as the favorite, which is cool to know that, that it is somebody's favorite in general. Um, and then um, Mark Noyne, I'm sorry, Mark, about your last name. Not about your last name, like, sorry that you got that last name. Sorry for the way <laughs> no. that I'm pronouncing it. Jesus. 
Um, <laughs> he, he, Mark gave it uh, an, an eight. Um, so that those are the two highest scores that, that it got. So anyway, um, Mark gave it an eight, like Anna, that's what you said a second ago, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Around about there. So now we're going to compile our results and then come back with what our hotspot members have said. Yes. To the compiler. The King's Quest 1 remake got a 6 straight up from everybody in our audience and got a 6 from Paul and a 6 from me. So the numbers I have to average out are 666 for that one. <laughs> Very metal. Yeah. Um, okay, so do, 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 do. I have magically calculated up the average scores for each game for this ep episode. So before I read them out, I was wondering, Paul, if you could read out what our fellow members of the Adventure Game Hotspot thought for their scores. Yeah, I've, yeah I sure could, and I will. So uh, Space Quest Historian. Um, spa uh, Trolls ranks... I mean, shocker, Space Quest 3 got a 10 from him. Uh, I'm going to go go in order, by the way, here, so mm. as as one might. Um, Trolls gave Leisure Suit Larry 2 an 8. Mm -hmm. another, another one that, that really rates Larry 2. Uh, maybe I'm not going to go in order. Yeah, I'm going to go in order. I can I can pull it off. Um, Trolls gives Colonel's Bequest and Larry 3 both a 7. Mm -hmm. um, he gives the King's Quest remake a 6, which is higher than I would expect. If, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and probably to anybody else who's listening would might be expecting if they've seen his King's Quest videos. Um, Con uh, Conquest of Camelot, he gave a five. King's Quest four, he gave a four. So he he rates the King's Quest remake more than King's Quest four. Mm -hmm. um, and he just recently played Police Quest two, which is why it breaks my heart that he's got it last with a three. Mm -hmm. um, disappointed fatherly like head shake trolls unbelievable <laughs> ridiculous um one short eye is next one short eye gave um 10 out of 10 for the colonel's bequest here here we're in agreeance um hero's quest he gave a nine mm -hmm. um king's quest one the remake he gave an eight which is quite high um king's quest four he gives a seven wait a second really I mean, I know really because we copy and pasted this, but so one short I ranks the King's Quest one remake over King's Quest four. Well, I'm going to take issue with this with him in private. He gives a six to mixed up Mother Goose. Fair enough. Um, mm -hmm. And then Adventure Game Hotspot, Joshua specifically uh, of of the duo there of, of Josh and Jack with Jackua. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know it wasn't that funny, but man, that was <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> Josh and Jackawa. <laughs> oh, before you read it out, can I just say one of the things that one short I said was he rated um, Codename Iceman, Mask of Eternity out of 10, <laughs> and at the bottom with the asterisks, Mask of Eternity is indeed a number somewhere between zero and negative <laughs> infinity. Very good. I like that. Mask of Eternity out of 10. Damn. Should have done the whole episode like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so and, and back to back to our uh, Joshua. He gave uh, Colonel's Bequest a 9, Space Quest 3 an 8, Hero's Quest a 7, Conquest of yeah. Camelot is a 7, um, and King's Quest 1 the remake is a 4. Where it belongs because it's been mm -hmm. overrepresented by our network <laughs> friends. So anyway, there's the Hotspot Networks ratings. Anna, what's, what's ours? What did we, where are we at? All right. And the final score is, and that's everybody's score that we pulled across our audience, as well as Paul and I's score, as it's all averaged out in my weird mathematical way that I've decided makes sense. This is the total. And the last one on the list, and the least popular at this time, with the fewest number of votes is mixed up mother goose with a score of 3.25 which i guess i'm not that surprised about eh? a you neither yeah a? that's a solid a for me the mm -hmm. fun fact yeah. canadian spell a e h so we do there's no a in the word a which is no otherwise it would be ah. or or A, because that's the letter and the sound that that letter makes. But it's like fine. The now. letter A. I know. Yeah. I'm just, I'm no, just... you, you, unless we're saying, if we say fucking A, like fucking A, man, that's spelled like a fucking and then an apostrophe with an A. 
Right, 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 exactly. In that spirit. It's fine. Not like this is about ready ranking games, not about, you know. It's just I'm a little bitter, I think, because my last name was Corman with a K. And everybody assumes it's a C. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, it's 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 right. spelled with the letter that makes the K sound. Like, why are we why are we doing this to each other? Why did we be like, hey, so for all the K sounds in the world, like cat, like that should be a C, right? <laughs> and they're like, Yeah, it should be. Like, what the f Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It't matter. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um, okay, so there's no need Ice for Man a C, was also is my point. There's the no, letter C for maybe real. a CH as they do in Spanish or at least Mexican Spanish where there's a CH letter, but like but just the C, it's it's an imposter. It either is where an S should be or it's where a K should be. I'm gonna start a petition down with the letter C. Sometimes it sounds okay. like an S, depending on where you put it. It's right. really it's either it's an a S or a K. Letter. It doesn't. All right. Anyway, mm -hmm. mixed up. Mother Goose three point two five. Codename Iceman three point five eight. King's Quest One Remake six. Conquests of Camelot seven point oh nine. Leisure Suit Larry two seven point five two. King's Quest Four at an eight point two seven. Leisure Suit Larry three at an eight point three eight. Police Quest 2, 8.52. Colonel's B Quest, 8.53. Space Quest 3 at a 9.3. And Quest for Glory at a 9.34. Booyah. Wow. Well, I appreciate you being mature about Quest for Glory winning. That was minimal gloating. <laughs> and I competitively am a little bummed that, it, that Space Quest 3 lost out to it. <laughs> Even framing it as lost out to it is, is adolescently unnecessary. But that's how I feel. Um, this whole thing is rigged and bullshit, and I'm flipping the table over and leaving. <laughs> well, good, because now that gives us the chance to say thank you to our Patreoners for supporting us and giving us the ability to keep making these episodes, because honestly, uh, it, it, with this being able to help pay for our hosting, it, it really helps us move forward and, and think of other ideas and not have to worry about where we're going to get the uh, the ability to even make this happen at all. So it, it pushes us to keep trying. And thank you so much to Brian Manow. Gareth, Jay Holmes, Mark Fillion, Michael Council, Tim Ellis, and everybody else who is a member of our Patreon. I'm so sorry we didn't ask you for your opinions for this episode, but we are learning, damn it. Um, I just want to take a minute, too, to say, Mick, um, you are the coolest person. Um, thank you so yeah. much for... Yeah, for hanging out and for being a part of the, the band. It was so great to meet you in person. I will forever yeah. remember meeting my other buddy from Victoria um, and also to Gareth for not only yes. being Leisure Suit Larry, but being just a real all around good guy. Um, somebody who was there to help and get things done, to figure things out and, and just to be 100% on it through the whole thing. Like there. unsung hero on it, backbone. 100%, <laughs> 100%. So just, just thank you guys for being you guys. You guys absolutely uh, a rock. All right, so I would love it if you would get a hold of us and say what you think. Uh, maybe you don't think we scored this properly. Maybe you have another number in mind. Maybe you have an idea for an episode. Uh, maybe you just want to say, hey, guys, thanks for the podcast. Or, hey, guys, please stop making this podcast. Whatever it is, <laughs> get a hold of us on Twitter at CGD Podcast or uh, at Phantom Fellows. Uh, you can also send us your words at, oh, now we have a new email address. Paul, what is that? It's mail at class. Nope. That's that man. I've been rehearsing this line for several minutes and I've, I, I got nervous. You guys it's mail at CGG podcast.com. So our website as it has been is CGG podcast. Now it's just mail at our actual website because before it was, doesn't matter. Mail at CGG podcast. Perfect. And then uh, otherwise, find us on Patreon as Classic Gamers Guild. You can join us on Facebook. We're a page. We're a group. Uh, we're also on Instagram and YouTube as the CGG Podcast. And that's it. Go forth and play adventure games. <laughs> also, don't forget to check our episode descriptions for what our Hotspot Network friends have been up to. There's a lot of good videos coming back from the fanfare. Um, so really going from Daniel Albu, some interviews. There's... Uh, Adventure Game Geek did an interview with myself about Phantom Fellows. Um, so as always, we always put the um, what the network friends are up to in the description. So check it out below and don't do a merc.
football Ricky up there. <laughs> little c- clam clattering. I don't know how to feminize ball breaking. Clam Just so I- clattering. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the clattering clam, and then that's the name of the restaurant. Right? <laughs> it's like a good like piratey pub. It'll have the like clattering a, clam, but the clam open and the clam closed, but the clam's perpendicular. Right. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's good. <laughs> Right, be all animatronic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs>